The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. Yeah, yesterday was an eventful day across the Midwest, especially where we saw severe storms fire up across the region and we saw all hazards, right? We saw damaging straight line winds mm -hmm. indicative of those blue dots. And we actually had a few tornado reports and the most of them overall were in the Midwest in yeah. Ohio. Yeah, Indiana, Ohio. Yeah, it was a busy day. I was looking at yeah. the maps and I was like, my God, I can't remember the last time I saw that many watches boxes that were up and the warnings too. It was like a thousand miles yeah. of tornado watches that were spread mm -hmm. out across the country here. Very active. Big hail too came mm -hmm. out of these systems, you know, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, um, Oklahoma, Kansas. Like, there was Arkansas. I mean, there was so much. So let's show you some of those storms its final stretch but as the storm winds down more than five million people are still under active alerts today including an avalanche warning we've got that um, you know it's a it's a level four out of five in terms of avalanche threat for the backcountry there that goes to five o'clock tonight in Colorado we also have a number of, uh, of issues out there as well when it comes to the winter weather alerts especially in southern Colorado and down into parts of New Mexico and Arizona now Denver the alert was allowed to expire the snow is still coming down though this morning in Denver after almost half a foot of snow fell yesterday. Travel could still be difficult this morning, especially along the I-25 corridor. So let's check in with meteorologist Chris Bruin, who is live in Denver right now. Chris, uh, let's talk about totals, conditions on the roadways. I mean, what a mess yesterday. I-25, I-70, yeah. I-80 was how I saw was closed for a time too. I was one spot at Nederland, more than four feet of snow. I mean, it really was an intense storm, and it is still going, actually, in southern Colorado. You're get, actually obviously getting some improvement there. Here, That will help with the road conditions today. Chris, thank you for your good reporting out there. We'll be checking back in with Chris. But let's go to um, some of the updates here. We do have some of the totals coming in. This is still a work in progress as we continue to find the snow totals coming in. But look at Nederland, 53 inches. We are more than four feet of snow there. 45 inches in Genesee, Aspen Springs, 45. And by the way, these two I checked, th these were updated yesterday afternoon. So uh, we still are waiting, you know, for the total as of this morning. Pine Cliff 41, Echo Lake 41 inches of snow. Yesterday, Eldora, Loveland, um, a basin, all closed for skiing because of conditions. The travel, of course, to get there was a challenge here. Uh, and I believe Eldora is going to be uh, tough going again today. So um, check on that before you decide to go out. New snow now, Southern Colorado. We're going to be getting more down there. Still New Mexico, Arizona, um, Southern Utah. We're, we will be picking up more now. The upper level low portion of this storm is pretty stationary, pretty stuck getting into the next few days. And so this is going to be a focus for us here with the snowfall kind of sticking around here today into tomorrow, perhaps into Sunday. We'll have to see what happens then here. But this is just a very slow moving stuck pattern. It's now though south of the Denver Metro. So that does give us a break up there. Um, we do have those avalanche concerns here. And Alex, um, you know, that, that'll be a factor for anyone thinking of backcountry. I wouldn't do it. It's a level four out of five yeah. in terms of risk. Definitely stay out of those season for that. We also have snow and heavy wet snow slamming the Rockies, dumping almost a half a foot of snow in Denver alone. Much more here in many of the suburbs and snow is still coming down this morning before tapering off later this afternoon. Travel could still be difficult, especially along I-90, I-25, I-70 is open, but still, tr you know, tricky in spots. So let's check in, check in with meteorologist Chris Bruin, who is live in Denver right now. Um, you know, Chris, we're looking for some of the snow totals and some of the biggest ones coming out of where you were yesterday, down, you know, around Lone Pine, Castle Pines, Castle Rock. Yeah, the Palmer Divide definitely played a role, as did the higher elevations west of town. And nearly 4,000 species of plants and animals. Chesapeake Bay is truly an extraordinary place, and that's why we've named it Best in State. Liz. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, yeah, you can join us every Friday all year long. One closed again today, so we will see. Chris, thank you. And when they open up, it's going to be a grand oh, time yes, out there. Oh, yes, it is. Well, joy, awe, and sometimes tears. A total solar eclipse brings out a lot of emotions. Meteorologist Stephanie Abrams witnessed the 2017 event in Madras, Oregon. And let's just say it was as unforgettable at, for her as it was for us. And you can catch live coverage of this year's eclipse on April the 8th right here on the Weather Channel. This is the path of totality, which, remember, was a big deal back in 2017. Like, mm -hmm. are you going to the path of totality? Right. 
are you going to the path of totality for this one here? You know, the you will nationwide get to see something, at least a partial, mm -hmm. but this is where the big game is. And I mean, there's a lot of big cities in yeah. that path. I mean, you got places like Dallas, Little Rock, uh, working your way up towards Buffalo, Indy, you're in there. So, so there's a lot of big cities that are going to be welcoming a lot of people that are going to check out this yes. uh, path. Of course, you know, weather is so much of a factor here. Clear skies would be optimal. Um, here is a look at you know, the exact specific path of totality and then what you'll see in terms of a partial. You know, if you go to places like New York City, you still have 80%. So it's yeah. still a decent sky show up there. Absolutely. It'll be interesting. The skies will dim a little bit. You know, you won't be completely dark, but you will definitely get some dimming. Yeah, you will notice it's not yeah. normal. Right, it's not. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll have continuing coverage, of course. As we get closer, we'll get you the forecast. With Kadir seems to be reaching its final stretch, but as the storm winds down, more than 5 million people are still under active alerts today, including an avalanche warning, but we do still have some winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings, mainly now southern Colorado. We're looking at southern Utah and the mountains of Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, the Denver area alerts have been allowed to drop, but of course, remember these backcountry avalanche warnings, they're in effect through at least 5 o'clock tonight here, and it's a level 4 out of 5. Denver, at least a half foot of snow. I I mean, look, the snow totals uh, all across the metro area are different depending on where you are and what your elevation is. So let's check in with meteorologist Chris Bruin, who has been live for us here in the Denver area. Chris, um, let's talk about conditions right now for travelers. And of course, those snow totals, everybody wants to know how much fell, but it depends is really the answer. The fact that we don't get, you know, these three, four foot snowfall totals, even in the mountains here, there's, you know, we're in, in the Colorado Rockies. We don't have an ocean sitting right next to us to provide moisture. I saw some ski resorts. We're closed yes. getting back on track there. Um, you know, you showed the road conditions here. Um, any concerns about power outages still in the area? there in the snow and uh, Alex you know there's still snow falling in southern Colorado um, and down through Arizona we'll get it into the weekend yeah absolutely blaming the Rockies dumping about at least a half foot of snow in Denver um, much more actually when you go up and in the elevation and snow is still coming down this morning in a few spots here it'll taper off this afternoon travel could still be a bit difficult this morning especially along that I-25 corridor we want to check in now with meteorologist Chris Bruin live there in the Denver area and uh, Chris uh, we're starting to wind things down a bit but you know still got to be mindful of trying to travel about uh, letting the crews kind of get the work done that they need to get done yeah, now winter storm Kadir seems to be reaching its final stretch, but as the storm winds down, more than 5 million people are still under active alerts today, including an avalanche warning. This is the backcountry in Colorado. This goes through tonight. It's a level uh, level four out of five here, so pretty intense concerns. Um, also, we still got some winter weather advisory and winter storm warnings, not in Denver, but in southern Colorado, southern Utah, Arizona, into New Mexico. The upper level low is still hanging around out here, and there's still little snow coming down in the Denver area uh, this morning morning here after some big totals across the metro area. Travel could still be difficult this morning across the I-25 corridor. And meteorologist Chris Bruin is on the ground in the Denver metro with a closer look at conditions today. Activities are still going to happen for St. Patrick's Day here. Denver uh, is known for their big party that they have for the holiday. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these totals. Nederland, 53 inches, so we're talking more than four feet of snow. Genesee coming in with nearly four feet at 45 inches. Aspen Springs, about the same. Pine Cliff, 41. Echo Lake, 41. And some of these numbers can still go up. Again, so the reports are still coming in. So, um, yeah, we're going to end up with many spots up over four feet of snowfall. And, yes, elevation played roll, but people do live in those areas. So it's not like we're just talking mountain spots. This is what's yet to come. You know, most areas are winding down in the Denver Metro, um, but then south of there, we still have snow falling into southern Colorado, the southern Wasatch here into Utah, Arizona, Flagstaff. Get ready. We've got some snow coming our way. The upper level low portion of the reason why we had the snowfall, this is still hanging out here. And so this is going to be with us in through today into tomorrow. And we'll see if you know, finally by Sunday things get kicked out. But but it is finally snowing now in Flagstaff at 32 degrees. Winter weather advisories are posted there. The darker blue winter storm warnings. So still travel I-25 could be disrupted in southern Colorado down into New Mexico. We'll be watching that. You see the forecast here getting in through the day today. Another spot that is going to feel the influence is Las Vegas. It's been raining there yesterday. Today it's going to keep on raining into the weekend. Tough timing for any of you planning that getaway there uh, for the St. Patrick's Day holiday into Las Vegas. We've got Flagstaff with snowfall coming in and the snow 
snowfall rates like to moderate as we look at this year through the day today. Maybe some lingering into Saturday as well here. And so we'll keep an eye on road conditions out there. Again, temperatures hovering near freezing, especially overnight. I think there could be some slick spots. Denver for us, look at this. We get back to the upper 40s by Saturday. You gotta love Denver weather because by Tuesday, Wednesday next week, we are back in the 60s here. And that will, uh, if you don't need to go out, I suppose you could just wait for the sun to melt your snow in your driveway, Alex. Glorious Denver with the ups and downs. Yeah. From tall tales and folklore to today's hard science, the solar eclipse has fascinated and terrified humans for thousands of years. Astrophysicist Dr. Paul Sutter takes us on a whirlwind tour of eclipse history from ancient to modern times. Yeah, and you can catch live coverage of this year's eclipse on April the 8th right here on the Weather Channel. So path of totality, that's where you want to be. It stretches from Mexico through Texas. I mean, it goes through a number of states here actually ending up in Newfoundland. So we've got a lot of options for you, but of course, it makes a big difference. The forecast you would love to have clear skies you get to see it all in its glory and so at this point too soon to make a specific forecast but we can look back at climatology to see well where are we traditionally the most cloudy on april the 8th and the cloud cover climatology shows that you know, there is certainly a better chance of being cloudy around the ohio valley the great lakes up into the northeast here but I mean, it's not 100%, so there's always a chance based on the weather that day. This will be something to watch here. And again, while there's a better chance further south you go, we know things can come in the way of getting a get clear view of the sky. This time of year, April the 8th, climatology looking at where do we typically see thunderstorms, um, and particular in particular, the tornado risk, well, it's in the southern part of that track um, and maybe extending actually even a little farther north here into parts of Illinois or Indiana. Uh, we are going to keep watch on again, not just the potential for storms that could bring tornadoes, but thunderstorms in general. You know, this is that time of year where we see that kind of activity ramp up a spot like Dallas, just to give you a sense of the timing, regardless of the weather here, we've got a, a pretty long event because the partial will begin just after 1220 local time, 1223, and then that partial will end just after three o'clock. Clock. So the time of totality will begin at 140 and 43 seconds here, lasting until 144 and 35 seconds. Um, again, the totality is everything, but the partial itself is at quite a show, and everyone across North America will get to see at least the partial, no matter where you are, even if you're not in this path of totality. Niagara Falls would be a great spot, Alex. Um, I'm sure that would be one of your top spots to see uh, it. I